excited about what God wants to do. The Lord is wonderful. He's amazing. And he is in control. And I thank God for each and every one of you. And I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I do. And I appreciate all of your love and support and getting to be in service with you once again. I don't take it for granted, and I hope you don't either. We never know the next time that we'll get to be together. So while we're here, let us enjoy his presence. Amen. While we're here, let us enjoy his presence. While we are able, let us magnify the name of Jesus. While we can, let us give him praise. He's worthy tonight. Hallelujah. Can you give him praise in his temple tonight? Hallelujah, Lord. We give you glory and honor tonight. You are worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You want to push your enemy back? Just give God a little praise. He'll back off. We'll go ahead and begin reading. First verse in the book of of third chapter of Acts. And it says, Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain lame man from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, Look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength so he leaping up stood and walked and entered the temple with them walking leaping and praising God and all the people saw him walking and praising God then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple and they were filled with wonder and amazement and what had happened to him. Now as the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch which is called Solomon's, greatly amazed. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why do you look so intently at us, as though by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and asked for a murderer to be granted to you and killed the Prince of Life, whom God raised from the dead, of which we are witnesses. In his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know, yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Yet now, brethren, I know that you did it in ignorance, as did also your rulers. 
But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all his prophets, that the Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said to the fathers, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear in all things whatever he says to you, and it shall come to pass that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. Yes, and all the prophets from Samuel and those who follow, as many as have spoken, have also foretold these days. You are sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying to Abraham, and in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. To you first, God, having raised up his servant Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from your iniquities. Father God, tonight we just pray that you will allow this moment to open our eyes, open our hearts, open our minds to you, that we may learn, that we may grow, that we may see something that you are showing us, leading us, guiding us, teaching us to think in a new and holy way to you, Lord. That, God, we'd be more than just hearers and thinkers of this, Lord, but be doers of your word as you teach us in this tonight, God. And I just pray that as you anoint this, that you will use your servant for your glory. For, God, we are here. We are offering ourselves, Lord, as a mouthpiece and a willing vessel. And I just pray that you use us for your glory. And we ask all of these things in the wonderful and mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the church said, Amen. Amen. There's a lot of good stuff here. Let's go back to the start. So we read of the story that begins at the gate. But before we start, there's something that God put in my spirit. And I want to put this into your spirit. And maybe you want to write it down or maybe you just want to say this out loud with me. But demonstration and proclamation presents credibility. Demonstration and proclamation will demonstrate credibility. We find in this story at the gate called Beautiful. One that was calling out for something they did not have. And in this moment, we found that people that were followers of God that had seen the sufferings of Christ come to this moment. And there was a moment where they had to not only visualize and question what they should do, but they had to act. Somebody say that with me. They had to act. They had to take action. They had to do something in that moment. How many of you know tonight that when people are coming together in the house of God, that you need to be able to take action in the house of the Lord? There are many people that come in here each and every service that are looking for us to take action. Listen, I'm going to talk about that first word for a few minutes tonight. I don't want to beat up on this all night. I'm going to get right to the point. The first word I want to talk about is demonstration. Taking what you know and what has been proven and using it out so that other people may learn from what you know and start using it in a way that they can use it in experience. I want to demonstrate by example the way I play piano so that you can learn how to play piano. I want to demonstrate to you the way that I can preach the Word of God so that you can learn how to become a greater preacher. I want to demonstrate to you how I love you so that you can learn how to love other people. I want to show you in my life, how I love to praise Him so that it'll help you learn how to praise the Lord. How many of you 
know tonight in a moment of trouble when trouble is in front of you you've got to demonstrate what you've got inside amen, amen. amen. you've got to take action you've got to use what you know it may be a whole lot it may be a little but whatever it is you've got to use you've got to use it you've got to use it Somebody say that with me tonight. I've got to use it. I've got to use it. You have got to use and demonstrate the good that God has given you. However big or small that it is. Whatever it is. A testimony. A song. A handshake. A praise. A word. Something. God has given you an action to take in a time of trouble. When the waters are being stirred and the spirit begins to flow. God is not calling for us to sit in a lack of action. God is calling you. I feel like preaching in here for a minute. He is calling his church to step up in an act of demonstration. So what do they do? Look at us, they said. They got the beggar's attention. Look at us. But they didn't stop at demonstration. They weren't just going to show him. They were going to speak something. They connected their demonstration with proclamation. You're not only going to have to use what good that God has given you, but you've got to start speaking the good that God has put in your life. You've got to connect them together to start being credible or what I want to call pleasing to the Lord. Hallelujah. Connecting demonstration and proclamation begins to produce unmerited and Powerful favor. I, I'm going to come up with a better word as I'm standing here. But I'm talking about a level of favor that when you begin to walk into a room, people will want to bless you. I'm talking about the kind of favor that people don't even know you, but they want to do something good for you. When you begin to connect the demonstration of obedience of God with proclaiming the word of God and putting your obedience with the word of the Lord together, God begins to do amazing things in your life. So they said, look at us. Silver and gold I don't have. But then they reached out. Demonstration and proclamation began to meet together. But such as I have, give I to you. And in that moment, a miracle began to happen. A miracle began to happen. Let me tell you something tonight. We don't have to fight and to struggle to reach to a miracle. We just have to learn as people how to connect demonstration and proclamation we know we love the Lord and we can get in here sometimes and declare how much we love him and we know that we love to praise him and we can come in here sometimes and praise him praise him praise him but sometimes we've got to learn to connect our obedience and our proclamation of him and put those two together that it may be demonstrated to the Lord that we come in with intentions to be pleasing to him How many of you, when you grew up as a kid, wanted to make sure your parents knew that you loved them? Especially when you wanted something. You got your eye on something at the toy store, right? Or you wanted this new thing, so you started making up your bed. And you not only made up your bed by demonstration, but then you started proclaiming it. Mom, look, I made up my bed. Wow, that's great. And they start taking notes on the fact that, you know, you made up the bed. Well, look, I swept the porch. Wow. You swept the porch. That's great. Well, I want to go mow the lawn, too. Uh, wow. That's great. It begins to build up a confidence in your ability to demonstrate that you want to be pleasing to those whom you want to bless you. Do you hear what I'm telling you tonight? If we want to start building confidence... In ourselves and to God who wants to bless us, we got to start learning to A, showing demonstration, and to B, start declaring proclamation. All right? So let's go back. Where are we demonstrating? Are we demonstrating in attending? Is attending demonstrating? Well, you can't demonstrate unless you attend. 
So you got to be here to demonstrate. So that's getting your foot in the door. So it matters. It absolutely matters. But if that is all that you do, if you are attending but not participating and demonstrating the good that God is doing, then people are missing out on the impact you can have in their life from the good that God has done in yours. You see, you've got something good to say to them, believe it or not. You've got a testimony you can tell somebody. You've got something that you can share. You've got something that you can do to have an impact on someone else. And guess what? Sometimes we can have an impact on somebody just by making up our own mind that we're going to demonstrate to ourselves that we're determined to go on. How many of you have just had to demonstrate to yourself that I'm going to be determined to go on? I'm standing here today demonstrating to myself I'm determined to go on. I've got intentions. I've got things set ahead of me. I've got little faith pins set on the map in my spiritual geography that I'm looking for ahead of me that God's going to do. I'm believing it already in advance. And I'm here tonight putting my demonstration and proclamation together so that God may find me to be credible. So we're already agreeing that attending is the start. It's the beginning. But it's certainly not everything. To demonstrate something, you have to have the knowledge of it. And if we are not confident enough in something to have the knowledge of it, guess what? We're not going to ever show it. Brother, why is it that you think that nobody speaks in tongues openly in church anymore? Because we have lost our ability to make people comfortable and educated in understanding what the spiritual gifts are, what they mean, and how they apply to them. I'll go get my own amen in a minute. And if people are uncomfortable in understanding what it is, how they can use it, what it means in their own heart, then guess what? When it comes time to demonstrate, if they don't feel comfortable in showing the gift of God, they won't feel like they can yield it with confidence. I remember when I was younger, when I was first starting to learn piano, bless my heart, I tried my best to learn on paper. I tried to read the notes, and I could do better by hearing than I could by reading. And I went forever tricking my piano teacher into thinking I knew how to read it. I would get her to play it for me first, and I could hear it, and I'd play it exactly the way that she played it. But then after a while, she caught me. She was like, now stop. Where are we right now? You got to start all the way back over. I had no confidence in my ability because I had not been proven nor understood. So what am I getting at? If we are in here and we are not confident in our ability to rise up together and enter into 15, 20, 30 minutes of praise and worship time with God, if we are out of touch with demonstrating to the Lord that we love Him, if we lose that ability and confidence to demonstrate to Him how much we want to love Him in that way, then we're losing out on a moment of intimacy with God and people need to see it and they're not. So what happens? We just move on to the next part of the service. And we're waiting on some other demonstration to convert them. But there's a part of that moment in this section that God is wanting to use out of you. Do you know that? Every part of the service, God wants a part of you to be a part of it. He wants you to be a part of the intimate moment of worship. He wants to use your love towards Him and how you praise Him. He wants to use your praises and how you'll speak openly of your love towards God. But above that, He wants people that do not understand and do not believe.
to see your demonstration of that love to God. That's the most important part of praise and worship. Not just that we do it so that it may be seen by each other, but that people that may not understand it all may see that we love God enough that we will do it no matter what. No matter if we've seen each other do it a hundred times, we're going to come in and demonstrate how much that we love God so that other people may know our devotion to Him. Demonstration means you have learned it and you are competent in your ability to show it. Now, how many of us are confident enough that if no preacher showed up and they called upon you to stand to talk about the word, you'd be ready? Well, brother, I'm not called to do that. Now, listen to me. He said we were all with the ability to be a witness for the Lord. That means in your tool chest of witness, you should have the ability to quote scripture and testify and lead people to Christ. All right, I, I said I would, I will. Amen, Brother Jerry. Go on. We've got to be confident not only in our ability to love the Lord in our worship and devotion. But we've got to be confident in our ability to understand the word of God so that when we need to use the word of the Lord, that we will be confident enough to demonstrate the word of the Lord. But when the enemy's bumping up against you and you're not confident in it and the devil is messing with you, are you going to use resist the devil and he'll flee? Do you hear what I'm telling you tonight? If you are confident in the word of God and you're going to demonstrate the devil's not going to mess with you you're going to resist the devil Woo! hallelujah if you're confident in what the word says and you believe in what it says to you you're going to demonstrate it by rebuking him but if you're not then what happens we're beat up we're tossed we're thrown around and we come back wondering how the devil has rode us all week long. You must just be talking to me tonight. Devil's rode on me all week long, brother. We've got to build up our confidence in the ability to demonstrate the word of God and how we can use it against the devil. Because you don't have to wait for something to give you the power and ability to knock the enemy off. You don't have to build up some great big anointing to dismiss the devil. The word of God has already given you the word and ability to dismiss him if you'll use it and speak it. you just got to demonstrate it if you'll demonstrate it by the word you speak to it. Just got to use it. Somebody say, I just got to use it. Just got to use it. All right. So we not only got to learn it, understand it, be confident in it, but here's the key. At some point, we've got to show it in how we use it amongst others. Now, if I handed this off to somebody tonight and say, take it, the, take it the rest of the way home, who's ready? Well, some of you may feel that immediate anxiety because you're not used to grabbing a microphone and talking in front of people. Right? Natural feeling. But what about if we started out sometimes and you come up here every now and again and gave your testimony? Then the next time you got the microphone, yeah. it's not going to be as bad. Yeah. And what about concerning repenting if we actually would show that we need to say we're sorry from time to time to the Lord? Yeah. Maybe we wouldn't wait so long to come back and say to God, yeah. I failed. Yeah. And be willing to kneel down amongst our peers and let someone else see us on our knees. Showing God humility and saying, Lord, I just can't do this by myself. Oh, if they see me on my knees, they'll think I've got problems. Well, they may just figure out you're human after all. Well, glory. They might just figure out you're human after all. 
Yeah, that's right. If we are not executing, if we are not executing in repetition, then we are never building our confidence to be obedient. And the inability to obey God is sin. Now let's talk about that. Now the Lord would never give me something good and me being afraid to use it would be sin. Now here's why it's sin. Because you've been in it long enough and had enough time to build your confidence in your gifts to know about what your capabilities are, to know when you could use what God's given you. You've been in it long enough to know when the moments call for what you do. And when we refuse to do what we do when it is needed and others suffer, then it's a sin. I want to be real plain about that. We have to answer for the moments when it is our responsibility to demonstrate how we can be pleasing to God by injecting ourselves in a situation where we can make a difference. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. For example, if I have the ability to help people sing by playing music for them, but I refuse to play for them for some reason and sit on my seat and disobey my calling of music, I'm here to tell you, whether you think it's an excuse or no matter how messed up things may be in my life, if I have an ability to refuse God, it's a sin. And I'll answer for getting in the way of God's will. Now, will God send someone else and make it work? Absolutely. But will it still be something that I'll have to answer for? You better believe it. There are people in your life all the time, every day, that he is putting in front of you. That, And I don't know if anybody is going to raise their hand or acknowledge this or not. But there are people in open conversation that God wants to use you in every day just for you to talk about the Lord. And we know the word and can simply tell them about God. But we have refused God so much in just talking about the Lord. That it has become something we're going to have to answer for. Is anybody going to help me preach for a moment? We have got to get back to the place with God. Where we become pleasing again. In how we are witnessing. Not only in the house of the Lord. But in our everyday out of this place conversation. It's no coincidence to me that conversion is so close to conversation. Because I feel like that's where God likes to move. God wants to be a part of your conversation. He wants to convert you. He wants to conversate with you. He wants to hear from you. Now, let's talk about proclaiming. To speak what you understand with confidence that others may learn from it. And believe from it. Now, if you know good and well, now, how many of you are cooks in here? Well, I'm disappointed I've not got any of your food. I'm going to remember this. I saw a lot of hands in here. Mm -mm -mm. We'll move on from that. I'll remember that, though. So if you know about a good dish and somebody's talking about a good dish, but they say the wrong ingredient, or are about to put too much in it. You're going to proclaim with confidence. You don't need to do it that way. You need to use this instead. Because you already know. And have been proven by trying it in demonstration. This is what you need to do. So you're taking your demonstration. And you're putting the word into it. And telling somebody. So they don't make a mistake. You're giving them your words. That they hear it and change their mind. See, that's what God wants us to do by how we believe in our faith and how we can change other people's hearts in theirs. There are a lot of people walking in very dark situations right now. 
And all that we've got to do is show them by demonstration that we love them and show them in our words that God is still able to save them and to help them. If we would only inject our words of faith, Doris, you don't have to live this way. Life can be better for you. If we can just get past our fear to tell people the truth, they may not like you after it's over, but at least they'll know a better way. They may not understand why it is that you want to tell them what you're telling them in the moment, but I'd rather them know the way and them not like me anymore and have a chance to make heaven than for them to be put off and make hell their home because I wasn't man enough to tell them. Yeah, that's right. We can't wait until they make up their mind to get to church one day. You've got to make up your mind today when you leave church this night and start telling them in your conversation that there's a better way. There ain't no power in this preacher. I'm just here to remind you the power's in you. Hallelujah, I feel that. The power's in you. The power's in your conversation. It ain't in the silver and in the gold. But such as you have, you're going to give. Such as you have, you're going to give. The kindness in your heart, you can give to others. The faith and ability that God has proven to you, you can give to somebody else. Can I go on a little bit more? Is this all right? Now let's go back to verse 1. I want to read a few notes that I've got here. In verse 1, they faithfully did what they knew to do. What was it that they were doing? They were going to the temple. So yeah, attendance matters. They clarified that in verse 1. Attendance matters. They were heading to the temple. Let's go to verse 3. They stopped and addressed the needs with empathy. They didn't just pass by the beggar. They stopped and addressed the needs in front of them. Sometimes we're going to be presented. Listen, there'll be people that come up for prayer sometimes. They're going to ask for something bigger than you may even be able to give. That doesn't mean your faith can't. They may come up for prayer needing a million dollars when in your life you need two million dollars. But that doesn't mean your faith won't be able to help them in their situation. Now what I'm about to say is quite profound. And I hope you remember this. If you want to be more pleasing to God, we need to obey and proclaim. Period. That's it. There's nothing you got to say to me to make me like you more. That makes you more pleasing to the Father. There's nothing more that you have to give to this building that makes you any more credible to heaven. You need to come wherever you are going to go. With a made up mind to obey God and proclaim his word to those you're around. Because God wants to bless your life and give you his provision. Now, let's go on down to verse 4. This is an important part. They had courage to face their problems. So what do we got to do? We got to stop running. You know how we run as Christians? We just put it off till the next service. Well, I'll do it next time. I've got this song. I, seriously, I've got a song in my songbook. I keep telling myself it's bigger than what my voice can do. Well, I'll just do it next time. Right? I've got these ideas and ambitions in my heart where I want to do more in ministry. 
want to go out and reach out more. And then I evaluate the amount of time I have and how busy things seem to be. And I think, well, maybe next year, right? And then I think to myself, well, I, guess I really see the potential of what God can do in some stuff. It's like, well, I don't know. Things seem to be all right right now. We apply our level of logic where we should be applying faith. And we are taking away from God's ability to grow things greater. And we're killing our favor. I'm just going to be playing. We're killing our favor. We're killing our ability to please God. We think by being here, by doing a little bit, and not hardly doing much with it, is enough to cause it to grow up to do everything that we need it to do. But listen, my friend, just like it was with your parents, if something's bigger than your britches and too much for you to have as a kid, no matter how many chores you do begrudgingly, it'll never be enough for you to get it if they can't afford it. God's budget is limitless. He could give you anything. But the question is, are you able to handle what he provides for you? So here's the thing. If we want more from God, and this is what I'm trying to learn for myself, so if you don't want to learn this and you don't want to take this, don't throw a tomato at me, but just don't take this the wrong way. But if you want to grow in God, then you've got to understand something. It's going to require more of us to demonstrate and proclaim, which does mean, yes, I'm confirming this tonight. It does mean you absolutely have an external showing of yourself to God. It is an inside relationship. I believe that with all that's in me. I do. I believe that if I never had the ability to come back to the house of God again, that I would still have a good relationship with the Father. But concerning converting of souls, it is an absolute imperative importance that we remember that if we're here together, we should be showing out for Jesus. Showing out for Jesus. Please don't make me dance by myself in this place. Showing out for Jesus. I guess I'm going to by myself tonight. Showing out for Jesus. Hallelujah. Showing out for Jesus. Giving God our best. Letting the lost know that we mean what we say. That we believe in the one who's brought us through much. That we know he's the healer. That we know he's the giver. That we know he's the one who's give us all that we've needed. The one that puts the enemy underneath our feet. The one who blesses us when we don't have it. The one who's given when we never give. He's the one that takes care of us. So guess what? If God's our Father, we're going to be His children. If we're His children, we're going to be like kids were to their parents and start saying, Look, Lord, I come in and praised You. We're going to start telling Him in prayer. Look, Lord, I come in another night when it was hard for me. And I come in and sang another song for You. Look, Lord, I came in when nobody ate me and I preached all night, but I still pushed on anyway. Lord, look, I come on in again and I served you anyway. Lord, I served you in power, even when it was hard. Lord, I praised you anyway when it was difficult. God, I sang anyway when nobody understood, when nobody got me, when nobody understood me, when nobody was behind me, when nobody got behind me, when nobody got with me. I served you anyway. You want to start getting a hold? Oh man. Oh, I feel this all over me. Jesus was walking. He says, Somebody got a hold of my garment. Oh, I feel that. Somebody got a hold of my garment. We need to be like that. Persistent perseverance. Getting to the garment of God. Demonstrating that we mean business. 
I'm going to put it in this illustration and I'm coming to a close. If you want to get God's attention to get his favor, to draw his eyes upon your situation, serve him in the fullness of your heart and proclaim how much that you believe so that others who may not believe hear you and see what you're doing. And that's the way that you tug on the garment of Christ. That's the way you get the attention of the Father. That's the way you build credibility to God. Because it's great to have a relationship with Him. The inner relationship builds you to be strong so that you're ready for the outside or external relationship when others that are lost need to see what you got. You need to show others what you've got. Silver and gold, I don't have. But what I do, but what I do, I give to you. What is it he was talking about? But what I, let me put it like this. The world's things I don't have. But such as what God has given I demonstrate to you. He took him by the hand. What did he say? And immediately he stood, he leaped, and he praised the Lord. Talk about the way to start a service. Walking in with the guy from the gate that's been begging. Hallelujah. Talk about start, starting a service like that. What about if you remember that you were the one at the gate one day? I remember I was the one at the gate one day. And I was laying there lame for my sin. Laying there lame. Not able to do anything for myself. I remembered I needed God in my life in a greater way. And I called out and I needed Him. And He heard my prayer. He saved my soul. He made me new. He covered me by the blood. And He changed my life. That's something to be thankful for. That's something to praise Him for. I'm glad I got up from the gate. I'm glad I got up and I'm able to go to the temple. People can be astounded by the person you become. And you can disturb the church of the norm by showing them who God is in your life. Oh, I feel God all over me. Oh, I feel God all over me. Lord, nothing is impossible to you. Father, we thank you tonight for this word. God, we praise you tonight for your presence. Lord, in each one that is here, we thank you so much. Bless them with this word in their heart. Let it be remembered. Let them remember to demonstrate and proclaim all the things you have done in their life. That it may build favor in their life. That they may tug upon you, Lord. That they may get your attention greater, God. That you'll move in their situation with haste and might. I love you, church. Go out and be blessed. Thank you, Lord.